The Bank of Sweden Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel was awarded to three economists for their research on growth. Now, the winners are Joël uh, Machier, Philippe Agnon, and Peter Howitt. Agnon and Howitt built on a previous economist theory of, quote, creative destruction. Now, the theory of creative destruction explored by the Nobel laureates shows how new products build off of older ones and stimulate growth when they enter the market. These are products, these new products eventually outcompete the old ones. For example, course railways phased out the steam engine when more efficient diesel and electric engines came along. Nobel Prize for Economics Laureate, Philippe Agnon, joins us now. And uh, firstly, we just want to congratulate you. Uh, I know from hearing some of the recordings that you were completely surprised, but perhaps a lot of your colleagues uh, yeah, were not. <laughs> so con congratulations. Yeah, they were not, because I can tell you I was completely surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Good congratulations to you then. I was I do surprised. I can imagine. Uh, to be clear, though, you and your colleagues point out that creative destruction is the driving force of capitalism, and it does lead, of course, to disruption. Now, I'm going to ask you, for our audience here, do you believe, at the end of the day, that it is possible to mitigate its more negative impacts on society, things like inequality, economic displacement? Because for people who are insecure about the economy around us these days, they might say to you, Professor, no. No, it is not possible. So my view is that we can have uh, institutions and policies that can make uh, creative destruction socially acceptable. For example, in Denmark, they have the flex security system on the labor market. When you lose your job for two years, you get 90% of your salary and the state helps you retrain and find a new job. And there's been studies in Denmark showing that there is no negative impact on health uh, of losing your job in Denmark. So they found a way to accommodate creative destruction, the, the, to accompany workers, to help them, you know, move from one job to another. And uh, so, so it, it boosted innovation because it's much easier to lay off and hire. Uh, but at the same time, it, it, it did so in a protective way. So I think something like, you know, the flex security system in Denmark is the way to go. And I believe also very much in education. Uh -huh. We should, everyone should be well educated so that you can face the change. But so, so, many, so many governments have tried this. And, and while sometimes they succeed in measure, they do not succeed in terms of if you look at just, let's look at income inequality in developed countries. And then we have this compressed business cycle. Do you believe that these forces could actually pose a threat to democracy itself? I mean, how to adapt? And you've done so much work on this in terms of how to rethink the role of the state and civil society. Yes, exactly. So I, I believe that you need firms innovate. The state is there, for example, with tax policy and with competition policy. For example, there is always the worry that yesterday's innovators will turn into entrenched incumbents that will uh, stall, that will deter future entry and future innovators. And that's where competition policy is very important. But you see sometimes governments as being, are being captured by vested interests and they don't implement the competition policy. And that's where civil society is so important to, to limit the scope for corruption and for capture of governments by private incumbent private interests. So I believe very much in the triangle between firms that innovate a government that implements competition policy and tax policy, and the civil society that makes sure that the government is not being captured by incumbent interests. I mean, a fast-growing economy is one where new talents, no matter the social origins, can blossom and create, and uh, uh, they challenge vested interests and incumbent firms. But that's the whole thing. That's what creative destruction is all about, is to allow new talents to constantly challenge uh, uh, vested interests and, and yet, uh, established firms. And that's what makes growth dynamic, you see. Yeah, but yeah, and yet the very essence of this, I don't have to remind you, is challenging even in places like your home country in France. So I do want to turn to the artificial intelligence issue now. You've been steeped in economic history yes. for decades now. Should we fear it? It is very much the essence, right, of creative destruction and what it means. Yes. 
That's right. So AI has a big power, has a growth potential. Artificial intelligence has a huge growth potential because it automates tasks in the production of goods and services, in the production of ideas. It becomes easier to find new ideas uh, with AI. So, but the thing is that uh, you know, ill-designed competition policy can uh, stifle uh, growth. You see, from uh, from the AI revolution, can can limit the the growth potential of AI. So it's very important to have institutional change. That competition policy should adapt to avoid that so a few actors in AI monopolize the market and stifle completely new entry and new innovators. So we need the AI revolution together with good competition policy to harness the growth potential of AI. Similarly, for the employment potential, you know, to make sure that you know ai will not destroy too many jobs or that people can move from one job to another education is important and uh, flex security the labor market policy uh, that denmark for example implements the combination of those two will be crucial to mm-hmm. maximize the positive impact that ai can have on new jobs because ai will create lots of new jobs when you ai you become much more competitive and productive right. and there is a big demand for your product that's a source of creation of, of jobs well I want to congratulate you again. I thank you for schooling us. I know it is late now in France, but we are delighted to speak to you uh, on, on the day when you are celebrating. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for, for having me. Bye-bye. Thank you.